Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in September. This past month I read five books and I read a good range of books. I would say this past month I wasn't really focusing so much on reading because I started a new job and I was putting all my energy into that. Nonetheless, I did end up reading five books and the first one was The Brothers Hawthorne by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one is book four in the Inheritance Games series and it's following the Inheritance Games original trilogy, which was about a teenage girl Avery who became an overnight heiress to billions. And the only catch for her to get the billions was to live one year in the Hawthorne house with the four grandsons of the now past billionaire Tobias Hawthorne. But Avery, she needs to solve many puzzles and riddles that are surrounding this family and she may have a unknown connection to them too. Ultimately, I did enjoy the overall trilogy, but then for this fourth book, The Brothers Hawthorne, I enjoyed it a little bit less. I did end up rating it a 3 out of 5 stars. Although I did like having more of the loose ends that we didn't get resolved in book 3, being somewhat addressed in this book, and we are focusing on two of the brothers, Jameson and Grayson, who are the two main love interests for Avery in her books. But now we're focusing on the brothers and actually seeing their thoughts and emotions through their dual POV. And mainly we are catching up with them after I think around a couple months after book three ended. Jameson in this book is infiltrating a British underground club and he continues to compete against himself to be the best while Grayson is helping out some family members and he is grappling with his perfectionist tendencies. Both brothers deal with personal matters but they still remain true to their Hawthorne ways and also finding methods to heal from their unusual childhoods. Overall, I did have a really fun time reading this book, but it did feel like a large setup for Grayson's book, which is book 5 releasing in 2024. With that, it felt like the pacing was very slow in Jameson's point of view and his plotline. I did like seeing more of the brothers in depth, and to see what they were going through and of course there are still more of the mysteries and puzzles that are popping up and those are always really fun to read about as well. I will be picking up book 5 which is called The Grandest Game and I look forward to see what happens next. Then I picked up Roll of Wolves by Lee Bardugo and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the duology. In this duology, we're following Nikolai, Nina, and Zoya, and a few others recovering from the effects of a war. In book one, we are following Nikolai grappling with a dark magic growing within him, and he will need some help from a couple others to stop this magic from growing. I do recommend you to pick up the Shadow and Bone trilogy and the Six of Scars duology before diving into this duology because there's a lot of ground that's covered before we even get to this book. Now what I thought about Roll of Wolves was that it continued right off from the end of King of Scars which was great but I think the continuing expansion of the world really did detract from my own personal enjoyment. I wanted to read more about the core characters but I could see how major fans of the Grishaverse would enjoy this book and really love the new characters that were being introduced to. But personally, I just wanted to see more of Nikolai, Zoya, and Nina because I have been reading about them since Shadow and Bone. I didn't like having a certain character come back and cause more trouble for our heroes. But the best part in this book were the cameo appearances from some crows. There was like a minor plot point that I was spoiled because I didn't read this duology before I watched the Shadow and Bone TV adaptation and they had like a couple minor spoilers for this duology. So if you want to not be spoiled at all, I would recommend to read all the books and then watch the show. Overall, this sequel really did have the balance between many characters and their storylines, which did make it a little bit long to read. And I think if a couple parts of the book were shortened, it would have been a lot more enjoyable for me. Then I picked up a literary fiction book and it is Beartown by Frederick Backman. I rated this one 5 out of 5 stars. 
This book is about a small Swedish town, bear town, and its community really has all of its hopes resting on their junior ice hockey team. The townsfolk live and breathe hockey, but once a pivotal event occurs, it affects every character we come across. This author has a unique writing style and it gives us a chance as readers to take a glimpse into moments of each character and what they're thinking and reacting to events. It gives you a bigger picture of how the hockey team coaches parents and other teenagers and townsfolk all have something to contribute to the story even it may be playing a big role or a small role. Also, all the characters felt very real and very three-dimensional. Even though there are many perspectives in this book, it did feel that every character was very fleshed out. For me, I thought there were two main parts to this book. The first one being the intense preparation for the semi-final hockey game. And then the second part is after that a pivotal event occurs and we see how this event affects the entire town, good or bad. There is an exploration of strength, loyalty, bravery, sport culture, family, and community. It really did bring a lot of emotions to the surface for many characters. I like the small hints that we got for some of the characters' future. And this is the first book in a trilogy and I will be picking up the next book quite soon, I hope. Overall, Bear Town is a very intense read and it goes to show that the small moments in a person's life does have a large impact. Next up, I read Bookshops and Bonus by Travis Baldry and I rate this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book is the prequel to another cozy fantasy book, Legends and Lattes. And in this installment, we are following Viv, who is a mercenary, but she's been injured and she's left behind by her crew at a sleepy beach town. And there, while she's healing, she discovers the joys of a bookstore and reading. This book really did continue to follow that cozy fantasy aspect where we're following the everyday lives of fantasy creatures. And there are a huge variety of creatures that we meet. And it was very endearing to see how Viv is connecting with the locals. She does help out with the bookstore to increase their business and foot traffic. And I really love the vivid descriptions of food that we got. And of course, there is a small dash of a romance in there. I like this book, but it didn't have the same impact that the first book, Legends and Lattes, did have. But I really like this one nonetheless. The last book that I managed to read for September was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This is book one in the Akatar series. This is actually a massive reread that I'm doing. This is the third time I'm reading this book. And this is all to prepare for the third book in the Crescent City series, which is the adult fantasy series by the same author. And it is called House of Flame and Shadow. These titles are very long and it's always a mouthful to say. But in Agatar, we are following Fira, who is a human hunter who one day accidentally kills a fairy wolf. And with unforeseen circumstances with that, brings Fira to take a deal from a fairy and to live in their world in order to protect her family. In the spring court, she is surrounded by fae, who are pretty much her enemy and there are many secrets that they are hiding. There's also romance, action, conflict, and magic, which really does make it a very addicting read. Given how this is my third time reading this book, I already know what happens, but I still liked having the little foreshadowing hints here and there of what would be coming in future books. Although I didn't miss trudging through the first half of this book to get to the part that I really like. Akatar is one of those very, very popular series. Either you love it or you absolutely despise it. <laughs> I personally have loved these books and mainly it's for the characters. Although the writing is not the strongest, I fell in love with the characters and I still want to know what will happen with all of them. I'll be continuing this massive reread of the Akatar series and Crescent City for the rest of the year. So you will see some of my thoughts of what I think about a couple of rereads that I'm doing for this. Those were the five books I read in September and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. 
and maybe have picked up one or two to put on your own TBR. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!